It is really encouraging and so heartwarming to be with you all today in person and in the virtual world. This year's assembly is a first for the AEU in that it is the first time that the assembly will be being held in a hybrid format. So all of the anxieties that come with that, we are all experiencing for the first time. We heard that many of you wanted to meet in person, but we also wanted to maintain the increased accessibility that meeting virtually allows for. So I am grateful to the original co-chairs of this year's assembly, Anya Overman and Anthony Cruz Pantojas, for laying the groundwork to make this event happen. While they are no longer a part of the ethical culture movement, their work is seen and appreciated. I also want to take a moment to express profound gratitude to First Unitarian Society of Minneapolis and the staff here, particularly Tim Roll and Bethany Johnson, who have welcomed us into this beautiful space. I also want to thank our on-site coordinator, who is not here, Tialana Hunter, but you should have our contact information if you do have issues, particularly with your hotel. Um, or getting to any of the um, off-site destinations for dinner. If you were not aware, FUS, First Unitarian Society, is a non-theistic humanist community and a member of the Unitarian Universalist Association. It was once led by John H. Dietrich, who is known as the father of religious humanism, and it's considered the birthplace of congregational humanism. We'll hear more about the ties between congregational humanism and ethical culture tomorrow when leader emeritus of FUS, David Breeden, um, gives an address tomorrow and also sits on a panel with Terry Smith and our beloved Jay Hooper, who just wa walked in, which is perfect timing because I also want to express gratitude to Jay because they're the connection to FUS and us being in this great space today. Uh, Jay has been a visiting member minister at FUS for almost five summers now, I think, and I just want to say thank you. And I will continue to give thanks and kudos throughout the weekend um, so you get a full sort of sense of how much work um, and how much teamwork went into to planning and putting on this event. A lot has changed for the AAU since the 108th Assembly. We have a new larger governance structure that we are still growing into. The expansion of the AEU board into a representative board has provided an opportunity for greater input from the broader movement on the direction of the AEU. It is an opportunity for societies to learn more about each other and the different ways in which we operate. We are also still feeling the effects of the contentiousness of that assembly. This year's assembly theme, Mindful Stories, A Ritual of Care, is a space to start conversations and healing around that a chance to recognize and acknowledge that we are still, what we are still holding on to, and to consider what we may need to let go of, particularly if we want to um, move forward together. I am certainly encouraged by the way folks have stepped up and stepped in in these last few weeks to help make this gathering possible, and I'm confident that we will move forward together. We have multiple sessions planned this weekend to hold space for the important conversations that we need to have, the first of which is tonight with emergent conversations. There's also an intergenerational listening session planned tomorrow afternoon, followed by at the crossroads, which if you were part two, if you were, um, if you watched at the crossroads part one featured members of the board, the NLC, and the President's Council as sort of the three main bodies of our organization and talking through what our hopes are, what work we're doing, so you can all, we can get to know each other better, get to know the work that each other's groups are doing better, and really work together in better alignment um, than we have um, before. So I invite you to be open to these experiences, be open to listening to voices that you may not have heard before, and really embody the community that we strive to be. I welcome you to the 109th Assembly of the American Ethical Union and to experience mindful stories, a ritual of care. And now I have some housekeeping to do so you can better um, experience this assembly, whether or not you're virtual or in person. We have set an ambitious schedule for this weekend, but I do encourage you to find moments for yourself. If you are virtual, 
All of this weekend sessions will be recorded and available for viewing later. If you are joining us virtually, consider taking a walk while listening in or just sitting outside if you are able. The space that we are in is also set up for those in the room to see you if you choose to be on camera and to hear you if you choose to speak. So do not worry if you are um, attending virtually that you will not be able to ask questions or participate in some of the sessions. And we will be testing that in, um, in a few minutes with emergent conversations because that session will be hybrid. So um, uh, please let us, we, we appreciate the feedback. If you are in person, all of tonight's and tomorrow's sessions will be held here in the upper assembly room. Feel free to walk around whenever you need to. All gender bathrooms are just out the door and down the hall to the left. We also have a conversation room if you wanna to talk to people um, that is down the hall and to the right. And there's a low sensory room. And all of these are, they have labels outside so you know uh, where they are. Um, so I hope this weekend can be, you know, a space for sharing and some cross-pollination of ideas. Um, and also when, you know, whenever you're ready um, for feedback and really good conversation, I'm really looking forward to what we have planned um, and getting to know um, some of you better, particularly people who I have not met in person. And uh, I will now invite Humanist MN, who um, hosted the brief reception outside to say a few words. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Minneapolis. My name is Audrey Kingstrom. I'm on the board of Humanist MN, which is a chapter of the American Humanist Association. And in a few minutes, Suzanne will say a few words, also one of my fellow uh, board members. Um, so again, welcome to Minnesota. Um, I understand that you have a full program, but you are in just a really wonderful area between here and downtown. If you look out the window, you will see um, the Walker Art Center, and there's a wonderful lawn, and if you go down the, down the hill and down the lawn is the sculpture garden where you, ha you can find the cherry on the spoon. <laughs> it's just a couple blocks away, so if you wanna just take a little stroll, and there's a wonderful winding path. So it's not so exhausting going down and up that hill. Um, but, and then just over that way, there's uh, Loring Park, which is having um, an art fair uh, tomorrow and Sunday. So if you have a little time and, and want to take in the art fair, that's also a wonderful thing to do. I understand that you don't have a lot of time, but this is the City of the Lakes, and I could tell you all about just not far from here, within a mile or two, uh, wonderful places that you could stroll and, and see the beauty of this city. I just want to say a couple of things. As um, I personally also am a member here at First Unitarian Society, so I have uh, experienced congregational humanism, and I think that sort of fits with uh, ethical culture because you meet regularly. Sunday mornings for a platform, and it's probably not too much unlike what happens in this space every Sunday morning. A little different, different words, different, different ideas. Um, but as an AHA chapter, so I have my one, one foot in sort of the congregational or church, more of a churchy model of humanism, then I have my other foot in uh, Humanist MN, part of the AHA, which I always say is the secular, non-church model of humanism. And um, as, the, as our society as a whole, as the country becomes less churched, less religious, I think we find ourselves at a challenging moment, all of us who are involved in humanism community of one sort or another is what will the future hold for humanist community and creating that. And I think we are trying to help create that 
and I think the future is unknown. When I got involved in our humanist group, a humanist group that's associated with AHA, over a dozen years ago, we were really small. And we have grown over the years because we've just done more programming. We have no staff. We had no building. I don't know, what was it, five or six years ago, we started renting space. FUS gives us a good deal to rent space here a couple times a month, but otherwise we meet out in the community. And so I was talking to somebody, we're talking about building alliances, uh, uh, doing programming with others. We found that to be very um, helpful too as well. But anyway, so just doing programming, offering different kinds of programming, whether it's mindfulness or political discussion or book clubs, whatever. We do all kinds of things um, just to meet the wide variety of interests of people that find us. But in the last couple of years, we've, and, and of course we do social service projects, we do advocacy work, all kinds of things. But in the last couple of years, we've especially been concerned about Christian nationalism and the rise of Christian nationalism. So I'm going to turn it over to Suzanne and just tell you about one project that has been incredibly successful for us in bringing more visibility to humanism. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, my name is Suzanne Perry, and I'm on the board of Humanist MN. Just a brief word about my connection to ethical culture. I am a graduate of a program the American Humanist Association used to operate called the Humanist Institute. And we used to meet a couple times a year at the New York Ethical Cultural Society. Do I have the name right? <laughs> More or less. Okay. Um, the building. And uh, I have really fond memories of meeting in that historic and beautiful building. About Christian nationalism, um, yes, this is something we identified uh, two or three years ago as a really important issue that we needed to focus on. Um, one thing we did is work with some legislators to form something called the Secular Government Caucus. And um, we had good relations with these legislators because they came to an annual event at the state capitol that we have operated um, co to coincide with the National Day of Reason. Um, and then we decided, well, let's put a little pressure on them or let's let's give this issue some visibility so when they opened their legislative session last year they were greeted by a billboard near the capitol that said reject christian nationalism keep religion out of government some of you might have seen a copy of this billboard when you came in these are postcards that we have um, produced recently um, it had a really tremendous impact on our group. Um, somebody on Reddit noticed it and put it on Reddit and it got just thousands of upvotes. <laughs> and then uh, we sent out a press release about it to the local paper, the Star Tribune, and they ended up doing an article about it um, and while also exploring uh, what humanism is. It got something like 600, 700 comments, most of them supportive. And then um, people found us and started joining our organization. I just think this issue resonates a lot with the community out there, a lot of concern about it. So our membership doubled from about 200 to more than 400 in a couple of years. Um, so now we're, we're trying to build on that, we're trying to work with the Secular Government Caucus to actually get legislation adopted that um, reflects separation of church and state. We're hoping to have some events around um, church and state separation. And I think that's mostly what we've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, we've been doing a lot, but that's. But that's in this going. area, in this particular area, yeah. Um, and we've, we've gotten, a, we, we had these postcards at um, a pride festival and they were very popular. 
got a lot of people to sign up for our newsletter. So I, I'm sure you've noticed this in your own communities, how much concern there is, especially as we're leading into the November election. So 